is here. I'm going with stats. I still got ladies in the house. We got we multiply one to two. Uh, Shouts out to Diane Badiato, uh, our current registrar and assessor. She's doing a couple jobs. I mean, she got a, and she's she a little lady, little, little lady. She's got two big jobs, uh, but she's doing her thing. So we appreciate her. Uh, we got representatives from the Nebraska Democratic Party. And uh, we're going to talk some more politics. You know, tomorrow is game day. It's game time. You know, I, remember I was back in college, you know, getting ready day before, you know what I mean? Resting. So you'd be a peak performance tomorrow. And so I know all the candidates out there knocking doors. It's, 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 it's time, crunch time. And so we got some representatives from, from the Democratic Party. We want to talk some more politics because um, there's no better time. It's tis the season. You know how these stars are at Omaha. They got their own nouns, verbs, prepositional phrases, and predicates in order to do some stuff. Well, I'm going to let y'all introduce your own self. So we'll get right into a dialogue. We're going to talk a little bit about some politics. And uh, if you guys on Facebook have some questions, you can uh, uh, write some questions. Um, I'm going to let you guys, ladies, introduce yeah, yourself, and then absolutely. we'll get right into the dialogue. How y'all doing? Uh, good. So I am Chair Jane Kleb. I chair, head up. Chair. I am. Yep, yep, yep. Well, you know, you're, look, you're like a chair. You're like a young lady. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, they normally are white and in a suit, but right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I am white, but right. I mostly wear boots. Right. Um, and, yeah, so I'm the chair of the Nebraska Democratic Party statewide. Okay. Okay. Yep. And this is Precious. Precious McKesson, constituency director. I should get that word right. I've been saying it since April. Oh, okay. Constituency director of the Nebraska Democratic Party. Yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, so, Jay, we haven't had you uh, in a while. We, we have Precious yeah. in here. I know she's Precious. I uh, she is. Does she look Precious? I like the hat. <laughs> who, who is that? Is that uh, That's Alabama a and oh, I, I like Alabama. Shout out to Alabama. <laughs> uh, we, we got Joe Jones. Thank you. We got you in our prayers from all the hurricanes and stuff going on down there also. But, but Jay, um, so, so what's your actual role? Because, yeah. you know, we always like to start with the, the foundation of education. Well, what, what's your actual role? What's your responsibility? And, and, and uh, how can people get in, get involved in, in the party? Yeah. So I am part of one of 50, essentially. Each state has a chair of the statewide Democratic Party. Okay. And we're responsible for everything from recruiting candidates, helping make sure candidates have the proper training and resources and access to resources they need to run. We manage something called a voter file, which is where all of our historic voter data is and how we can do better targeting. So especially down ballot races can really target their mailing because they usually don't have a ton of money. So that helps them out. Mm -hmm. We then, you know, we're responsible for creating kind of the programs that can help the entire democratic ticket. So for example, this year is the first year that the party has done a statewide voter guide. So each of the 93 counties got a voter guide that lists all the Democratic candidates on their ballot from top to bottom. That's never been done before. Some right. counties have done it kind of in their individual counties, but the state's never done it statewide. So okay. we're making big improvements. So now, now this is one example of you talking about that. That's an example. Yeah. And, and it's basically for this county. That's right. And so as a voter, you will take your voter. So if you're a registered Democrat, you got mm -hmm. one in the mail mm -hmm. and you would take your voter guide with you. And not all of these races, for example, will be on your individual ballot because they're by district, right? Mm -hmm. So like school board, but you'll be able to compare, especially for things like natural resources district. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have party identified. So if you're one of those voters who want to put a check on Donald Trump and the Republican Party, you want to know who the Democrats are. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Now, how long have you been in this role? So I got elected in December, 2016. Well, I got elected in the summer, but I took my term started in December, 2016. So mm -hmm. almost two years. And, you know, we've raised almost a million dollars in those two years. We have 60% of the top of, top of our ticket are women. Mm -hmm. We've hired a constituency director for the first time in our party's history. And we're committed to being full time in North Omaha, not just three months before the election. Okay. So there's been a lot of improvements that we've needed to to make. And we had a good, strong party before I became chair too. I think one of the mistakes that kind of new leaders sometimes make is that they're the only ones with the good ideas and nobody mm -hmm. mattered before them. We have a lot of good historical elders of our party. You had one on the air, Frank Lemire, Preston mm -hmm. Love. Right. So we had a lot to build on as a foundation, but we also have a lot of room to grow. I get what I... You, know, you always got to bring in new ideas and, uh, and the elders, you know, had to yield sometimes. And, and, yeah. I, and it's good that they, they have yield. Um, of course, this is this is great. 
um, like I said, in order to make people aware of who's who's whom, uh, you gotta let the people know who who's actually actually running. That's right. Um, and so, uh, what are some of the other things, some other changes, yeah, enhancements, yeah, that you have? One made of the other big changes we made this year was we started a volunteer block captain program. Mm -hmm. So we have over 500 volunteer block captains all across the state of Nebraska, and they're responsible for 50 voters in their community. Because sometimes if you go door knocking for a candidate. You don't know the streets, you don't know the neighborhood, you may not be comfortable, mm -hmm. but this way people know who their neighbors are. Uh, we give them everything they need and they knocked on their doors anywhere from twice to two times up to three times in the last essentially seven months. Okay. So it's a lot of good voter contact. They're making sure everybody ha in the house <laughs> is registered to vote. Um, they're making sure that anybody in the house who wants to vote by mail has the proper application, knows how to fill it in and when to get it in by. And then we, we did it like an issue survey. What issues do Democrats care about? And then this last door knock was all about the voter guide, making sure folks have that ready to vote. OK, I just heard that voting is tomorrow. What should I do? Yes, voting I, is tomorrow. I just heard. So 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 I, I, I just came in town. I just came from, from Iraq. I came to vote. What would I do? You know, yeah. I, I just. So what I do is, can, so I, still vote? Vote? can I still vote? I mean, as long as you're a registered voter, you Lunch should go to your um, polls and you need to vote. Okay. Tomorrow, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. They're open. Yep. And if you don't have your voter guide, you can go on NebraskaDemocrats.org. We have a button right on the home page. You can click on voter guide, look at your county, push the button so you can bring in your smartphone when you go in to vote and use it that way. Or if you have a voter guide, you can bring that into the polling location, into the booth with you so you know mm -hmm. who the Democrats are. If you don't know your polling location, we also have a vote center on NebraskaDemocrats.org that can help you look up your polling location. Now, we got all these conspiracy theories. Oh, yeah. Now, I, read, bring I, read it. I read a lot of stuff. I read a lot of stuff. <laughs> now, um, are you guys worried about voter fraud? Well, we're not worried about voter fraud. We're worried about voter suppression, which okay. we're already seeing that. Yeah. So Precious can tell you the story of some ex felons who had already served their time, already served their probation, and got turned away after filling out the proper voter registration forms okay. this year. Yes. Yeah, so just recently, this last week, um, we had a young man who had um, registered to vote back in early October, and I submitted his voter registration. Well, he got a letter from the county commission, the election commission office, saying that he's not eligible to vote. Well, this young man had been... Um, off basically released from prison in March of 2013, which would have made him eligible in March of 2015. Mm -hmm. So some way, somehow the systems were not talking. So when he went to register, um, the system that the election commission saw said that he was not registered to vote. He could not vote as a felon. Right. So after um, he called me and I was able to call them personally, have, you know, it's good to have direct contact with somebody. Oh, right and um, they were able to research him and they called me back. They said, hey, you're absolutely right. You know, we had to call the secretary of state's office and they had to confirm that this young man is eligible to vote. But only problem that we have is the fact that he now can only vote on a provisional ballot, mm -hmm. which is not you know, that's not good. That means that that ballot won't be counted, am I not mistaken, until after the election. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my thing is, is that my, my main question is how many letters have already been sent out to somebody who to ex felons and who did not even want to, you know, have the, 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 the energy to say, you know what, let me call and fight this. You right, know, right. this young man just happened to know me personally and was mm -hmm. like, Hey, can you call and find out? Mm -hmm. I did. Everybody doesn't have a person that they so, can so, call. So, so where's the loophole at there? That's the problem. We so, we're so, trying so, to fill so, it so, now. So, so, so it doesn't happen. For the next election, we don't. Well, hopefully, it's not going to happen because now yeah. the Omaha World Herald actually picked up the story, and it just so happened that that day that this that this happened, I happened to have an Omaha World Herald reporter walking with me on Halloween, so I happened to tell her what happened, and she was like, "Oh, I'm going to take this story," and I'm like, "Okay," so I didn't know anything more of it, but she called me the next day. She called the gentleman personally. At, um, he actually wanted to be known that he this happened to him, and she called the election commission office, got their information, and so the story's out there. But this just shows that. There's some type of loop. There's a communication issue that we got to figure out where that communication issue is. So should, should the felon actually bring in paperwork to the election commission? Yes. If so you, because we actually the person had, had to be proactive because the election yes. commission is already then that's not their responsibility. But it should be. They should. There should be a checks and balances. There should be someone that when that letter comes in instantly, when you see that, you should have a secondary area to check. So automatically, they mm. should have been verifying it with the secretary of state right. instead of saying no. We're going to take our information. And say this is what happened. Why, but why would they? 
why would they verify with Secretary of State versus uh, the Department of Correction? They would have because the, the Secretary of State would have the most accurate, up to date. Well, they sh actually they all three should be talking together. Right, right. At the end of the day, they all three should right, have the right. same information. But obviously, somewhere there's a loophole. But Secretary of State has the correct information. But this all goes back to why Senator Justin Wayne's bill at LB seventy five, where we need to ban the two year voting right, needs to be banned. It needs to be in effect. It did pass. It did pass. Mm -hmm. Got on the floor. Passed. But Governor Rick Ricketts um, vetoed it. This is why we have to have that ban, that two year waiting period ban, because we won't have this issue right here that we're having right now. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, if you know of anybody that got that letter, you can go in today until I think the Election Commission's office is at six. six today. And then you can go tomorrow. Uh, their office will be open until 8 p.m. You can go in there, show them the letter, say that you believe that this is incorrect, and you'll be able to vote then, right there and there, right there and then. Uh, it will have to be a provisional ballot this time. Mm -hmm. But then next time, this is something, it's one of these issues that we will definitely follow up with right, right. post-election because it should have never happened. The Department of Justice should have had the correct information. Secretary of State, Douglas County, everybody should have had the correct information. So when Republicans say, oh, voter fraud, and here's the one example of somebody who accidentally voted twice or whatever other thing that they're going to say, they never talk about these cases. Right. This is a pure example of voter suppression. And there were several hundred people that this happened to. Yes. Right. So ex-felons who did their time, served the community, won a vote, submitted the proper paperwork to vote, and then our government let them down. Now, uh, who's running the election commission? Because I know it's Democrats, one's Democrats, and one's Republican. Yeah, so Brian Cruz is the Republican, and Chris Carruthers is the Democrat. Okay. And I don't place the blame no, on no, their no, shoulders no, for no, this. No, but no, 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 yeah, no I'm, they, asking, I'm just asking questions. I'm just asking yeah, yeah, questions. Yeah. They've <laughs> actually done a really good job communicating. They've right. made mistakes. Right. We all do. Uh -huh. um, but the data issue wasn't their problem. It was a problem on from what we've been told, and yeah. we're researching researching it more was Department of Justice. Okay. It looks like, I mean, it okay. Look like, okay. Oh, great, yeah. Great. They basically in 2018, in 2018, uh, 597 letters of this kind was sent out to felons, mm -hmm. to ex-felons, and then including um, 137 in October, this month alone. So there's 137 ex-felons that's possibly the incorrect information is in there and they're eligible to vote. So those people need to go with that letter or they can contact me on Facebook. They can contact me at Precious at NebraskaDemocrats.org. Send me a copy of that letter. I will call personally and research it to make sure that they're eligible to vote because that's 137 people. I don't care if you're independent, Republican, Democrat, you have a right to vote and we need to make sure that your right is being um you know, just because right. you, you did your your time, you you waited your two years, you have a right to vote. Um, elections tomorrow. What's yeah. I mean? What's what's what's? <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, how, how many how many candidates do you, is running? We actually this year have eight hundred and fifty Democratic candidates running across the state. Man. It is a historic number. The largest number that we've ever found in our other in our history was five hundred and fifteen. Um, and this year we have a lot of individuals representing communities of color. We have a lot more women and you have people who really just look and sound like their community. Mm -hmm. So nothing against white lawyers. We love them. We all have them. We all use them, but we don't only want white lawyers, right? Or mm -hmm. only people of that have military backgrounds to be representing us in Congress at the state legislature or the mayor, city council, right. et cetera. We want a diversity of people that have diversity of backgrounds and diversity ideas. So that's what we really worked hard on recruiting this year. Mm -hmm. And we had a lot of people who we didn't need to recruit. They right. just wanted to step up and say, look, I don't think our school board's doing a good job. I don't think we're providing healthy enough school lunches. I think I want to challenge the status quo on city council or run for mayor. So you had a lot of people. I think some of it was in response to Trump, but I'm not going to give all the credit to Trump because right. I have to say there's movements that have been happening the last decade right. in our country. Black Lives Matter, the pipeline fighters that I've been working on against the Keystone XL pipeline. You have the Women's March, you have Native Americans. And so there's lots of movements that have happened mm -hmm. where it was natural for the next step to be beyond the streets was to run as a candidate. Okay, all right. Now what's next for the Democratic Party? I mean, because uh, yeah. um, um, obviously uh, you commit to North Omaha Hall where you're not just gonna come for three months or or during election cycle, yep. which, which, which is the difference? which is a game changer. Um, what's, what's some of the other innovative ideas? Because in order to get these millenniums, like your daughter, you know, she's, 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 she's still got four years. Yeah, you know, so. Uh, <laughs> in, in Don't rush to, our babies out of the okay, house. What are you I, doing? Uh, I mean, so, so, so how, how are you getting those, those voters, you know, involved in this system? Because sometimes yeah. if you listen to mainstream media, you know, they get complacent. Oh, yeah. No, there's no question about it. So I think there's a couple of things. One, 
We are, uh, Ron and Precious are both going to remain on staff. Ron speaks fluent Spanish, uh, has been do will be doing a lot of work in South Omaha. Precious will be grounded here in North Omaha. So they'll be here full time. We'll have an Omaha office for the Nebraska Democratic Party. We also will continue our blue bench trainings. That's something I started as chair where we're training people who are interested in not only being a candidate, but also being a campaign manager. Okay. It's one of the big yeah. gaps that we had this year is we didn't have enough campaign managers to service all the candidates. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of ways to get into politics. You don't just have to run as a candidate. You can actually run the behind the scenes nuts and bolts of the field programs, communications, fundraising. So we'll continue those trainings. Mm -hmm. We're obviously going right into a mayor election in Lincoln. So that's May 2019. 2019. Yep. Okay. So that's going to be a big deal for Democrats. We've held that mayor seat. We have uh, one seat away from having full control over both city and county. So I think we're going to do that come May 2019. So it'll be a full blue city, if you will, in our star city of Lincoln. So that's a big deal. And then I think lastly, the biggest thing that's coming up is obviously 2020. And nobody wants to hear me say that because we're not even finished with the 2018 election cycle yet. That's tomorrow. Polls are open eight to eight. Um, but we have a decision to make as the party. And we're making that decision in December when we have our state central committee meeting. We have to decide if we are going to do a caucus again or if we're going to move back to a primary. And so there's pros and cons on both sides, but we'll debate that as the state central committee. And then we'll make that decision and we'll announce that vote on December 8th. Okay. I, I like the caucus process. Yeah. A lot of people do. Some hate it. Some love it. Some are in between. Right. So I know you probably, probably got fiery in the last, you know, last election with the Bernie Sanders and the Hillary Clinton. <laughs> it was, it was tough. We're still, we're still <laughs> making, you know, Jimmy Carter said you're given pieces of wood every day, whether you build a bridge is up to you. Mm -hmm. And so we're still building that bridge among lots of different constituencies. Oh, interesting. I mean, yeah. so I'm telling y'all voters, y'all should get mad at this uh, because it went to a caucus. Y'all should forgive <laughs> one of the great elders, Sonny Foster top this. No. Oh, yeah. Famous saying now. <laughs> he said, there's no permanent enemies. There's no permanent friends. It's only permanent issues. Oh, yeah, that's good. I've never heard that. I and like so that. if you guys stay on the issues, then take out all the emotions out of it, then then um, uh, we worry about um, building fences back again. Yeah. It shouldn't even happen that way. Yeah, no, I agree. Mm -hmm. And I just think the Democratic Party for the last decade has lost its way when it comes to actually reaching out to our base voters, right? So we took advantage and took for granted uh, black women voters, no mm -hmm. doubt. Uh, we forgot to invest in rural communities. You know, I live in Hastings mm -hmm. and the Democratic Party was really just at completely absent ever since Senator Nelson left the U.S. Senate. It's like we didn't even have a Democratic Party out there. Right. So when I became chair, we had about 40 county chairs. We now have 73. So that's the type of work. It's not glamorous. It's a lot of time on the road, right. but it's rebuilding our party, recommitting to the people who we know are the base of our party and who make up our party and make our party strong. Mm -hmm. And that goes not only for the state of Nebraska, it goes for blue states, Minnesota, California, mm -hmm. Washington, DC. The Democratic Party needed to get its stuff together. And okay. that's why we lost against Trump, right? If you were to like, you know, look from above and say, Hillary Clinton, one of the most qualified candidates we had, was going to lose to Donald Trump, a lying reality TV star. Nobody would have believed that, but he did. And I think it's because the Democratic Party forgot about our base. Mm -hmm. That, and this is America, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, greatness. I love our reality yeah, TV. <laughs> hey, I, mean, I mean, this is America. You know, greatness have, have come, it comes from, from every community. Yeah. And so um, I don't get mad at Trump at all because, you know, uh, I'm just trying to follow his policies, you know, while he's in office and until you guys galvanize a new a new leader, then uh, uh, we got to go with, his, uh, with their policies. But uh, the emotions, the emotions, you got to stay away from the emotion. That, that's, the, that's, keep, that's keeping us off track. Uh, so so what's what's next for uh, uh, you, Jane, because after 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 uh, uh, tomorrow. Yeah. So you've been working whole state. That's like a, a, a state campaign itself. So you, everybody <laughs> know you. Everybody know you. And then, uh, you know, Hastings. Hastings is dear to my heart um, because 
uh, Bill Gavers, he's coach. Uh, he's the head coach at Hastings College. He's my he's my running mate in high school. I love it. And yeah. So uh, it's a good college. So uh, and we're home of Kool Aid. Let's not oh, forget. Yeah, home of Kool Aid. Claim to yep, fame. Yep, okay. Yep, what I doubt. <laughs> We invented Worldwide. that drink, not the drink that people use to kill yeah. themselves. That was flavor aid, the yeah. knockoff, right, right. <laughs> not yeah. Kool Aid. Yeah. I just yeah. want to be yeah. clear about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, so what's actually next for you? Because you were working, yeah. And uh, I said, Damn, why did she run for governor? Why did she, why she <laughs> because well, why she run for such such? Why she run for such such? So, so I know you probably building yes. a party, building obviously things that doubled, uh, but I mean, but but in the future, so. I, I, and maybe, maybe I should ask this question Wednesday. Yeah, 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 exactly. Let's see what results we get. Um, so I'm chair for the next two years. So okay, okay, I'll so be chair you, until maybe. the end of uh, 2020. Um, and then I don't know. Um, you know, I've always said my husband's the candidate. I'm the person who no, I mean, is the I, organizing. I, 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 I your husband had ran since the, the first time. Yeah. He's yeah, been no, on Lolo. Been, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and you've been out front. <laughs> so, so, so let him. He's been stay, taking care of the kids at yeah, home. Yeah, let him stay <laughs> with the, the kids. And, 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 yeah. and, and we, need, we need different minds anyway. We need, we need some, some feminine minds. We'll see. I've always said that I think my skills are best suited in the party organizing. Mm -hmm. So maybe that means a role within the national party, because what's happening now from my perspective is why a lot of red states and really good candidates in red states don't get the resources they need to win mm -hmm. when they should is because there's nobody representing rural and red states in those rooms when the money decisions get made. And so we've so, got so, so, to so, get so, more of us in, in those decisions. Yeah. So, so, uh, I yeah. got to everybody. They said, well, why are you doing hang out the Republicans? Why are you do I, I said, you got to be in the room. If you That's got right. the room, you're on the menu. Yep. Amen. Period. Amen. Oh, no, I still Period. And I, I know that you're friends with some of the Republicans. I respect that. Right, right. Uh, we oh. wouldn't have been able to stop the Keystone Pipeline without Republicans. Right. Farmers right. and ranchers that we've worked with over the years, most mm -hmm. of them are Republicans. So there are good Republicans right. yeah, out there. I There's doubt, no question about it. Without a doubt. There's also really bad Republicans, right? right and right. he's our president, but come on, you don't get to call women who are carrying their babies, mm -hmm. walking thousands of miles, you know, terrorists and drug dealers. They're mm -hmm. literally fleeing violence. Right. And right. they need to go through the proper application process, sure, and they need mm -hmm. to go through the proper asylum interviews, but to demonize women and children the way that Donald Trump does, and then watch some Republicans just look the other way because they're getting a big tax cut, that's a problem. Right, right. That's a problem. Well, and, and that's the reason why you're on here. And that's why we we, we really fair and balanced. Because <laughs> the pressure she let the new Fox. <laughs> you know how okay. No, we're truly fair and balanced over here. I've been I doubt. since April 1997, and they never changed that. <laughs> hey, hey, no, but uh but, but like no, I said, in, in order for us to get this radio station, uh to a Republican and a Democrat. Yeah. So it, it takes it takes compromise. Yeah. And, and sometimes we really got to really get back to, to that that type of uh, pol I mean politics. Yeah. So we can really start getting yeah, stuff it's gonna done. Take, it's going to take having to meet in the middle to basically make changes. Right. And we have to and we're not all going to um, agree on the same right. same things. But as long as we can come to a compromise and we can make it better. I mean, I feel that that's what the American people want. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's what our city needs. That's what a lot mm -hmm. of people need in order for us to really move forward. So, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I'm a true Democrat, but still, hey, we're gonna have we're gonna have Republican friends. We're gonna have to work together. Mm -hmm. That's the only way that we can make it work. But we just want to be the controllers, right? Well, you know, but uh, but, <laughs> <Right. laughs> but you know, when we wake up in the morning, you're a young lady, and yes. I'm, a, I'm a young man. Mm -hmm. Before we any any label. Mm -hmm. And and I, and I hope we, we remember that because, you know, those that's outside of us that, that infiltrate us through, especially through social media, yeah. uh, use those indifferences to, to, to further divide us. And, mm -hmm. and you you're know, right. You're absolutely right. So, and being a behavioral scientist, a social scientist, I like to brag on that. Shout out to Midland Luther College for giving my education. Um, that is, the to me, the next um, uh, movement as far as war is to cause distinction from internally yeah. by putting messages and so to me it's actually working and so that's why i always oh, yeah. so, so that's why i always advocate no no uh uh even though he's re he's a republican she's a republican i'm a democrat and and she's a democrat uh we still men and women first before oh yeah we're, we're any, still human beings and we still have we still have morals we still have values but sometimes um yeah, we have our morals opinions. and values yeah we've got different opinions sometimes a little, <laughs> a little bit. And we love to, you know, it's open invitation to debate right. the chair of the Republican Party because I don't know what he's scared of, but for oh, the past oh, two years. Are you talking about John? No, D Dan Welsh. 
the, yeah, of the state Republican Party. Okay, okay. Uh, he okay, always sends his executive director. Oh, really? uh, yeah, so he must be scared, oh, frightened. Oh, you call, you call him out? I don't know what he is. Oh, but he can't oh, be that busy. Oh, oh, so like he didn't even <laughs> go to Boys and Girls State, one of the traditions of you know the okay. both the Democrat and the Republican Party. But nope, he sends his executive director, which I like, Kenny. He's a Canadian, yeah. even you know, <laughs> he's a Canadian working for the Republican hey. Party. But that's good. No, last time I was in Detroit. <laughs> last time I was in Detroit, I couldn't make a phone call because all the Canadian they they, they turn their power up <laughs> on, on, on the cell phone. I'm serious. I was so pissed off. I said, man, I, mean, I want to I think Kenny's half American, so I just want to no, be no, fair. No, 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 he has I, dual I, citizenship, no, I think. I'm not mad at Tony and Canada, but, I, I, but they turn their power up up there. I'm, I'm about to call it FCC. Come on, FCC, y'all regulate us. So, no. Uh, John Tucker, get him in here, John. I had John. Yeah, I'd be happy John. to do John, too, but come on, statewide. You can't. Come uh, on. Oh, so, oh, John, you calling out John, too? Yeah, I mean. Them all out. Oh, oh yeah, oh John, yeah, yeah. John's a pretty engaged yeah, county yeah. chair. There's yeah, no yeah, question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But their state chair, MIA. 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 So, okay, well, until the news cameras come. Let's. Uh, yeah. Even then, he sometimes so, sends so, Kenny. So, so what you want? You want a debate? What you want? What you yeah, want I would love a dialogue. dialogue. Doesn't have to be a debate, but let's come on your show. Let okay. it be the first time that yeah, the okay. Republican and the Democratic chairs okay. are together in the same room. Okay, now what's his name again? Uh, uh Dan, Dan Welch. Welch. Is that the one to be on city council? I think he, he might have been on the city council. Yeah, 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 yeah. He has dark hair. Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah, he was on city council. On the city council, I think. Yeah. I don't think I've ever met him in person. The chair before him he was like so him. engaged. He works with, um, why am I, I'm blanking on his name. He was Ben Sass's campaign chair, Mark Fulton. Okay. He was a great chair. Uh, okay. And he would come to debates because that was during Obamacare and I was heading up a project to pass Obamacare. He would come to debates, not okay. scared. Okay, all right. Unlike... <clears throat> All right, all right. <laughs> all right, y'all heard it here first. Oh, yeah, we're going to bring them together. We're going to bring them together. Ladies, is there anything else that we need a dialogue that we didn't discuss? Vote tomorrow. Yeah. Vote. Like, I mean, tonight, mm -hmm. um, if you have anyone who has a early ballot mm -hmm. and you can't make it to drop it off, um, you can reach me by cell phone, 402-706-4398. You can reach me by email. You can reach me on Facebook under Precious, or I think it's Monique Precious. Or Precious Monique, one of the two, mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, inbox me. We will come pick up your um, early yeah. ballots as long as you've already sealed them and signed them on the front. Okay. And we will drop them off for you because we know that, you know, some people may, but I realize you, that has to be in like tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. So we're, that's what we're doing right now. We have canvassers on the phones talking to people and we have drivers going out helping like, hey, we'll come pick that ballot up. Make sure you seal it and sign it though. Because we want to make sure that's done before we get there, and then we'll take the ballot and take it to the election commission office and drop it off for you. Okay. Yeah, do yeah. not put it in regular mail. It is too yes, late for too regular late for mail. Regular you got to drop it off at the election county office, one of the drop off locations, or get it to Precious, and they'll come okay. pick it up. Are you guys involved with the rise to the polls? I was about to just say something yeah. about that. So, Press and I have been working hand in hand with that. So, mm -hmm. normally they'll email the party. I'll turn around and forward the information to Preston. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to say this real quick. Thank you to everyone who has reached out to say they want to drive to the polls. Preston called me this afternoon and told me he has a record number of people that we, I think we have more drivers <laughs> than people vote. I mean, at this point, we have more drivers than he's ever had before. Right. So we're um, now um, with those drivers actually giving them tasks to will they'll be um, assigned to basically he have enough to be assigned to a precinct mm -hmm. so they'll be assigned to just that precinct to be able to collect awesome. numbers and make sure that we have an up-to-date number count okay um so That's we're great. pretty excited so um yeah preston's doing a heck of a job with that and we are excited and the number for rides to the polls is it on? Yeah, it's on yes it's 402-312-2891 uh, and that'll go to preston love at black votes matter yeah. All right, all right. And then the only other last thing I'll say is, and this number's on our website, we'll have it on Facebook, is the election protection line. Because sometimes sometimes things look funny, right? Mm -hmm. Or there's really long waiting lines, or you go to the poll and they say that you're not registered and you know that you are. Mm -hmm. So that's run by a nonpartisan group called Civic Nebraska. Uh, so that's 402-904-5191. We'll have that on our Facebook page and on our website. But I just want to close with a couple of things. One, it is critical that people vote for 427. That's the Medicaid expansion ballot question. Okay. It's all the way at the bottom. So don't deep, don't be one of those voters where you go in and only vote for the couple top elections. Go all the way through your down ballot. You have no excuse now because you now know who the Democrats are on all the different ballot races. 
and then you have to go all the way to the end to vote for Medicaid expansion. That with your vote, you're giving 90,000 Nebraskans access to health insurance, something right. that the Republicans right. have blocked <laughs> year right. after year in our state. <laughs> um, and so as Democratic voters, we got to pick up the slack that the Republicans are supposed to be doing to help, help them keep our family You know we're going to do this too. You uh, don't I mean, know why. Yeah. I, 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 and look, we're a good family. You know, the Democratic yeah, Party, I think there's been some <laughs> drama online, you know, about this or that, you know, mm -hmm. they say about the party. And the reality is people who say that, are dividers, okay. right? And if you have a problem with the Democratic Party, roll up your sleeves and get involved. Right. And you don't build the party by tearing down somebody else. Right. You build the party by building each other up. And people are going to make mistakes. People are going to do really great stuff. Mm -hmm. But the only way that we are going to actually end the one party control of our state, which all of us should want to do, even Republicans, mm -hmm. nobody should want a one party control of anything. The only way we're going to do that is if you put your bickering to the side, roll up your sleeves, and start to work together again. Okay. Before, I gave before, 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 uh, before, you gonna show your gift? What gift? What gift? Yeah, the gift? T-shirt. Uh, I gave. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I, I got it. Oh yeah, I do got. I, I got, got your got water it. bottle. Hey, hey, they're not trying to bribe you, y'all. They're, no, they're, they're not trying. They're not trying. Did the Republican Party do that? Or probably no, not. not. Turn it back. Turn it back. <laughs> I got two questions. I got two questions. Yeah. Um, uh, those that have, uh, what have you done for those that have reading problems? You know, kind of just sick and shed in. Well, what have, and, and those that are like blind and deaf, because you know sometimes those yeah. those voters get left out out, yeah. out the out the fray. So if folks are blind or deaf when they get to their polling location, they will have accommodations for those folks. Okay, and yes. then, so I said I can't read the ballot. Yep. So do I need to bring someone? That, nope, that can... the poll worker will definitely read the ballot for you. Okay, cool. Yep. So uh, Omaha, Nebraska, I, 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 I want to make sure because a lot of people don't, don't focus on that because I know there's about 30%, almost 40% that's illiterate, that can't read. So if you have that problem, please do not let that stop you from voting. Yeah. Uh, the poll workers will read, read everything to you. Uh, don't be embarrassed. I've been reading to my mama yeah. since fourth grade. She's 88. I still read to her for her. There's, no, there's nothing embarrassing about uh, not being able to That's read. Right. Uh, then also, if you need help yep. to learn how to read, make sure you uh, get in contact with Omaha Public Schools. They have adult education uh, programming, that, that, and that's free. And so we want to encourage uh, all those that just dealing just deal with some disability, or you know someone that's deaf or blind, or that have that disability that can't read, but want to participate. Let them, encourage them to get over that fear. I'm telling you. Uh, Can I um, also yes. say too, so today my brother, um, my brother is a quadriplegic, and um, it was emotional for me because for the first, the last time my brother actually voted was for Obama in 2008, right. and actually we went together to vote. Right. And so today, um, I was very blessed that um, the employee at the Douglas County Election Commission actually came out um, about a couple of weeks ago and made sure they brought out his um, for him to register because he had to switch his address. OK. Um, but when I got his ballot inside, it had a it said assistance needed assistance needed on his on his actual envelope. So that specifies to whoever gets that early ballot that someone filled it out for him. And you had to sign an oath in there. I had to sign an oath. OK. But the one thing that really, really touched me was the fact that even though I signed that oath saying I could sign his ballot. My brother was determined to sign his own ballot today. Oh, heck yeah. So even though he's a quadriplegic, he put a pen in his mouth and he put his two initials on his ballot. Then I signed it after him. That made this all worth everything, all my sleepless nights, my late nights coming home, missing meals, sciatic nerve hurting, uh -huh. uh, gray hair that I don't color colored because uh -huh. I had a little patch in here. All of it, it made it worth it because the fact that he wanted to make sure that he was able to sign that ballot and then we could turn that ballot in so his vote counts. It, 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 it meant so much. So just know that there's people at the Douglas County Election Commission that they didn't even know that was my brother. They just happened to call him. I sent in his, his registration. Mm -hmm. They instantly knew had to have an update. They came out, helped him. There's people that are want to help people with disabilities, and that's the great thing about the people that work in these public service jobs. So anybody with a disability, don't do, don't be discouraged. They will come help you. Um, we just want to make sure you vote, and you can have it to where assistance is is needed, and they they specified on your ballot so that you they know somebody's going to be helping you with that. So right, that's great. a good thing about and making sure that your vote is valid. Well, I know you guys learned something today. So if you got a disability, um, can't read, they will read for you. Um, if you need a ride to a poll, yes. if you don't have transportation, make sure you call 
302-312-2891. That's 402-312-2891. If you have problems at the poll, oh yeah, we got you covered. Yes. Oh yeah, you call this number, 402-904-5191. That's 402-904-5191. We want to make sure that we have all bases covered. If uh, you're getting suppressed, um, if you feel you're getting the wrong information, uh, reach out to someone early versus late. Uh, if you need a ride to the polls, make sure uh, you get in contact with the Democratic Party if, uh, if you missed this, I guess this, this, this info. Uh, and then also, if you know someone that's sick, um, deaf, blind, or, or can't read, make sure that you still get them to the polls because they still will have someone to make sure they can uh, get the information across to them. Right. And so uh, we appreciate you, ladies. Anything well, else? Anything no. else? That we- Shout out no. to the to the staff down in Lincoln and Omaha, and That's you know, right. all the candidates. Like, man, tomorrow is the day they work. They ran a heck of a campaign, and I just cannot wait to see the results. And we'll be down at Emory's starting at seven o'clock. We'll and anybody can candidates. come join us. Yes, yep. come down. We're going to celebrate with our candidates. So, you know. would y'all have a chitlins pig feast? What y'all have down there? No, we're having what? meatballs. Meatballs, we no greens. <laughs> Some other stuff. Precious was in charge of the menu. We know where you gonna be at, so we know we ain't gonna have none of those oh. items there. <laughs> yeah, where is that? Where is that watch party? Probably uh, at the Hilton. Oh uh, yeah, well, well you know, I'm going. I'm going out there just to come see William. Oh, hey, 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 I do want to invite everybody out there. Uh, um, I am. A, I am still a Democrat, you so I, that, so I let okay. I, I let everybody know. Uh, but but somebody got to be a leader. I yeah, appreciate gotta be you going. Uh, you, well, you leading the charge for us. Well, you know, I've been blessed to uh, host the Republican. Oh. oh, yes, the Republican election party. Uh, it's going to be out at the uh, out the uh, Regency Marriott, uh, Marriott oh, okay. Hotel. Right, and so uh, we're going to see how it goes. Yeah. Hopefully you'll be reporting that Democrats turned out in right. numbers <laughs> and that we have flipped some state legislative seats. Yeah, I yeah. think we're going to get Lathrop, DeBoer, Kavanaugh, for example, mm-hmm. in there. Scott Winkler yeah. could be a surprise candidate. We have a winner either way in LD8 with Megan and Mina. So okay. there's all sorts of good things happening. Okay, then well, see. And then I just want <laughs> you to take a picture of Don. Okay. <laughs> Uh-huh. Okay. After. All right. Let them know I said when bring home bacon the bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them that we'll come see you personally. All right. Bring them a bacon sandwich. <laughs> no, I, honestly, we know that yes. Representative Bacon's a strong yeah. candidate. Yes. It is yes. a fierce to the finish line. It's going to yeah. be very close. That yeah. last name is always going to get jumped. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I mean, bacon's good. I mean, you know, it's, 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 you can flip it any kind of way you want. Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> so. Microwave bacon. <laughs> yeah. Fried bacon. Okay. So. <laughs> Get out there and vote for the Democrats. Yes, that's it. Please, please. Well, we appreciate you ladies coming in. Yeah. We appreciate your, you. uh, your dedication. And also, uh, you're changing the, the culture of, of the, re- the Democratic Party. Uh, we'll it's necessary. It. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I got to make sure I say this because she just called me out. So we have Kimra Snipe, who is a winner also. And will be yeah, uh, unopposed. Dem- unopposed, and she will be sitting on the South. I mean, the, the um, school board from South Omaha. So okay, we'll sure okay, we wanna- okay. All right. Shout out to Kim- Black Caucus. Caucus. Yes, okay. yes. All right, heck yeah, I see that. I see that. And then also, uh, my man, when y'all talked about uh, caucus versus yeah, uh, primary, right. my man uh, Chris Pierce. Uh, he and I. That's when I was doing my TV show. Chris, who used to be a Democrat. Yeah, heck, he used to be a Democrat. Mm-hmm. But uh, we did a, we did the first mall caucus on my TV show. Oh, cool! That's yep. really cool. Yeah, yeah, when they were trying it all yep. out. In heck the yeah, yeah, heck yeah. So, yeah. Heck yeah. So, uh, I, I look forward to, to that debate. With, cool. Whatever you guys decide, it's gonna to be go. live streamed. You gotta be there. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna be the, you know, live stream. Yeah, it'll be live streamed. Our meeting is in Ord, Nebraska. It's a tiny little town. We rotate mm-hmm. our meetings just okay. to, to show the diversity of our state, get around the state. Uh, so Ord, they have a great brewery there called Scratch Town. Okay, now, where, now, 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 where's Ord at? So it's essentially like. North, north of Grand Island. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely north of Grand Island. Okay. Like, not, it's right at the foot of the Sand Hills. Yes. Oh, so, Sand Hills? So, yeah, so yeah, how, yeah. how many people live in Ore? About 2,500. <laughs> yeah. We will increase population by 10% because there's 250. And I increased the black population one day <laughs> right, by, by being nearby. 100%. One. 100%. 100%. I was there for <laughs> four hours. <laughs> it's a great town. So, okay. we're really excited. We will live stream uh-huh. the caucus primary debate, but we're also going to live stream the training. We're yeah. doing a diversity and gender inclusion training okay. um, to really get folks, you know, we just have a lot of 
uh, Democratic leaders throughout our state who really have not been around different cultures. Right. Yeah, I already know. I already we know. We just yeah. it is a learning process for everybody okay. on all sides. So Precious led the trainers coming in, and um, Ashley Spivey uh, is leading the training. So okay, yeah. cool, cool, cool. Well, I need some, some male. I need some male muscle in there. We do have a male in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a male person right, in there. Right, also, right. Yeah, the training also. So it'll be a okay. it'll male be a duo. A it'll be a male and a female. I mean, I think that's kind of how the party does right. that. Anyways, always want to make good, sure good. it's balanced. So right. um, that would be a great thing to have them come in, do that diversity training, and then um, you know. And, and then continue the conversation. That's and right. that's the one thing we want to make sure that after we do the training, that it continues to have that conversation, have that dialogue mm -hmm. and make sure that we um, really teach and, 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 and come together. Right. And right. I think it'll work. It's going to be a, it's going to be an awesome time. Yeah. All right. All right. right. Thanks for having us on. Uh, Omaha, cool. Nebraska. We've been talking to uh, Precious. What's the McKesson? I know. Well, you won't see me again until next and year. And Jane Clev <laughs> uh, for the Nebraska Democratic Party. Um, they want you to guys to vote tomorrow, November yes. 6th. The polls open up at 8 o'clock and ends at 8 tomorrow. Uh, they will be uh, having their celebration party in the most historic place or area in Omaha, right here down the Emory Cafe, just south of 24th and Lake. Uh, myself, I'm going to be out west. So we're we're going to be controlling the whole city tomorrow night. That's right. So <laughs> make, sure, <laughs> <I'm> make, sure, <laughs> make sure you guys get out and vote. Uh, your vote does count. Uh, if it didn't count, they wouldn't be suppressing votes. Oh, man. So I'm telling you, do not go with that stereotype that your vote do not count because they would not suppress your votes. Look at uh, they're doing it for real in, in, Georgia. in, in Georgia and, well, North, and North Dakota. Yeah, North Dakota. They, they're really doing it. And, and, and they have done it all over yes. with the redistricting. Mm -hmm. And so please, please stay wise in this process. In the meantime, oh, yeah. Boss with us. <laughs> <laughs>